Good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Um, as you know, we are basically doing some long term revision for maths paper two for the IB schools that are writing maths on November the 15th. Um, and today is the third. So we will just keep going and we're going to keep going through all the math paper two exam papers. Um, this is actually these paper questions are actually prelim papers from this year across um, the different schools. And um, all these papers come from the IEB schools. OK, so it's not like I'm choosing random schools that are government schools. OK. Um, Right now, so yesterday we started this question and I thought it would be better to actually do this question again from the start in order to get the true reflection of how to do this question. So it says in the diagram DBC equals 90 degrees, DBC, DBC is 90. Um, they also tell you that BCD is um, BCD is equal to CAE, which is alpha, and that BCA is beta, BCA is beta, and they tell you that these two lines are parallel and they've got you dx, it, this, yeah, db is x. Let's first find AC in terms of alpha and beta. I did it slightly differently yesterday, but it's going to work out to be the same. Do you agree that these two lines are parallel? And if that's the case, then this angle here is co with this angle. If this is 90, then the whole of this is going to be 90, which means that this is 90 minus alpha, which means that this big angle B here, which is what we're trying to find out, ABC, is going to be 180 degrees minus beta minus 90 minus alpha, okay? Which is the same as 180 minus beta minus 90 plus alpha, which is what we got at yesterday, which is doing it in a slightly different way, which is going to be 90 minus beta plus alpha, or you could write it as 90 minus beta minus alpha, whichever one. So this angle here is 90 minus beta minus alpha. Okay, there is a reason I'm doing it like that because maybe we need co-ratios, we'll see. Okay, the next thing we need to do is it says prove that AC, AC is equal to X times cos beta over tan alpha plus sine beta. Okay, so do you agree that we're trying to get from this, which has got cos's and alpha's in it, to this thing over here, which is AC? So what we need to do, and what I always say to you people, is that we need to find a bridge between this triangle and that triangle, and the only bridge that we've got is CB. So what we need to do is we need to find a relationship. Let me just get back to, oh, what did I just do? We need to find a relationship between um, X, alpha, and the CB. And that's pretty easy because that's a right angle triangle. So we can use SOA. We've got the alpha. This would be the opposite side, and this would be the adjacent side. So we're looking at tan. So we can say tan of alpha is the opposite side, which is x over bc. So do you agree that bc is equal to x over tan alpha? And at this point, I'm getting quite excited because I'm seeing there's an x and there's a tan alpha. So I'm feeling like we're getting somewhere with this thing. OK, so now we've got the bc. Now we want to get the AC. And what I'm thinking is that they've already asked us to work out what this angle is. So I'm thinking we need to use a sine rule. Okay. So what I would say is AC over sine of angle ABC, ABC 
is equal to BC over sine of BAC, the opposite angle, BAC, right. So let's work that out. So we've got AC, which is what we're trying to solve for, over sine of ABC is sine of 90 minus beta minus alpha is equal to BC over sine of BAC, sine of 90 minus alpha. Okay, so do you agree that I can rearrange this and this becomes AC is equal to BC multiplied by sine of 90 minus beta minus alpha all over sine of 90 minus alpha. Okay, at this point, I'm really hoping you realize that these are co ratios and we can change it. So this becomes BC multiplied by cos of 90, no, not 90, sorry, that's why it's a cos. Um, what kind am I using, Dr. Of beta minus alpha over cos of alpha. Okay, so now BC is x over tan alpha. Do you agree? BC is x over tan alpha. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that there as x over tan alpha and I'm going to play with this cos beta minus alpha. And I'm hoping you realize that that is a compound angle. It's a double angle, okay? It is a cos, cos, sine, sine, change of sine, right? So what does this become? It becomes equals, and I write it next to it, but you guys know that you should be writing below everything, okay? So it becomes cos beta, then it becomes cos alpha, okay, and the sine changes, so it becomes plus sine uh, beta sine alpha, okay, all over, and this is all over cos alpha. Right, happy with that? So do you agree then I could divide the cos alpha into both of these? So this becomes BC. The cos alpha cancels with that cos alpha and you're left with cos B plus sine B and sine alpha divided by cos alpha is tan alpha. And now I'm getting super excited because I can see the way clear the way forward. So I just oh, I just need to erase this top writing so that I can carry on up here. And guys, if you don't see it right now, don't panic just yet. The whole point about these sums is just to keep going. You need to understand, and I keep telling my students this, when we, when the teachers see this question, we haven't seen every single question in the entire universe. That's not how the maths and science works. What happens is that somebody makes this type of question. If we haven't seen it before, all we do is we follow the rules. We follow the logic and the rules, and as we go through it, so it works its way out. Okay, do you understand? So now I'm going to use this, but now I'm going to substitute BC. BC is x tan alpha. So I've got x over tan alpha multiplied by cos beta plus sine beta tan alpha. So what happens? Do you see that this becomes a multiplication becomes x? We can leave the x out because that's what they've got. Cos beta over tan alpha plus sine beta tan alpha over tan alpha. Those cancel. And ta-da, we have just proven that AC is equal to this. Ta-da, wonderful, awesome. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Okay, so I think we're finally onto circle geometry. Let's have a look. It says CD and CE are produced to A and B respectively. 
so that AE is a tangent. So AE is a tangent to the circle and AB and AE are equal. Okay. AED is 32 degrees, which means that as far as I'm concerned, that immediately is 32 degrees. Ah, oh, I just hate it when it does that. Okay, that is 32 degrees. Okay, and they tell you that CDE is 63 degrees. Right. So, do you agree that this is obviously 32 degrees because the and chord theorem. Their tangent is a chord subtended. So it says giving reasons. What is C? It's chord theorem. Okay. Now they want A E B. A E B. They want that angle there. Okay, well, do you agree that with the angle sum of triangle, we can get this angle? Yeah, okay, this angle is 180 degrees minus those two, or a better way to do it, actually an easier way. Do you agree that this whole angle has to equal the sum of the two interior opposite angles? But this little dude here is 32, therefore this angle has to be 63 degrees. So that is going to be 63 degrees, and the reason would be exterior angle equals sum of the two int up angles. Okay. Next it says, prove that, now we have to prove something, so let's have a look at whatever we want to prove. Prove that A, B, a, B, E, D is a cyclic quad. So we need to prove that A, B, E, D is a cyclic quad. Okay. Well, first of all, before we do anything else, do you agree that this whole angle here is 63 degrees? Because these are base angles of an isosceles triangle. Okay. And what else do I know? Because um, those are base angles, and therefore this angle, can I get that angle? Sorry, let me just work something out. Basically, in order to prove that something is um, a cyclic quad, you can either go for um, that they're both subtended, that angles that are subtended are equal, um, or we can go for the fact that... Um, exterior angle is interior equal to the interior opposite angle and there we go we've got it this is 63 degrees and this is 63 degrees and that is the exterior angle so the way I would write this is I would say this is this one here I'm proving that one I'm saying angle a b e equals 63 degrees base angles of triangle okay and then I can say well hang on but that also equals angle EDC because it's given but this obeys the rule that the exterior angle equals the interior opposite angle therefore A B E D is a cyclic quad. There we go. So now we know that A, B, E, D is a cyclic quad. Now it says prove, let's use a different color, prove that A, B, A, B is a tangent to the circle through B, D, C. So we have to pretend there is a circle going through B. Oh, I'm really crap at drawing. D, C, and it says, pretend, I mean, prove that AB is a tangent. AB is a tangent to that circle. Hmm. Okay, if that's the case, well, hang on a minute. We need to prove that this angle here is 32 degrees. Ah, oh, okay. So we know that because A, B, E, D is a cyclic quad, 
we know that A, B, D, we know that A, this isn't going to work with that pen color, is it? Uh, let's choose blue, dark blue. We know that A, B, D equals 32 degrees. Why? Because angles subtended by the same arc. Okay, so therefore this angle here is 32 degrees, right? But, degrees, but, 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 we also know that um, that would obey, that, but that equals angle um, ACB, ACB, which means, which means, but that would obey the tan chord theorem. Therefore, AB is a tangent. There you go. So now AB is a tangent, right? It says calculate giving reasons the size of angle BDE. BDE. So finally, they want us to calculate this angle here, BDE. Okay, B, D, E, B, D, E. Okay, um, that shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, we know that the, oh, there we go. So, do you agree that the whole of this angle is 63 degrees and this little angle is 32? So, do you agree that that has to be 31 degrees? Okay. We also have that this is a triangle. There are other triangles you could have gone for. I've chosen this one. Okay. Therefore, the angle sum of the triangle has to give me that angle there. So the way I would say this is, firstly, I would erase this bit here so that I can write here. And then I would say, well, we know that DBE, DBE is equal to angle ABE. Minus angle ABD, which is equal to 31 degrees. Okay. Therefore, in triangle DBE, DBE, do you agree that angle BDE? is equal to 180 degrees minus 31 plus 63 plus 32. And my reason would be angle sum of triangle, which is going to be 180 degrees minus 3 and 3 is 6, and 6 is 12, so it's 120. And that's 4, 5, 6. And I don't know what that is off the top of my head. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Let's just and then go. So then that would be 180 minus 126, which would be 54 degrees. So therefore, this is equal to 54 degrees. Okay, not too bad here. Let me just go back. 50. So therefore, this little angle is 54 degrees. So the whole point about doing this, and I've mentioned this before when it comes to um, paper two and when it comes to trigonometry and circle geometry, you need to learn your rules. You need to learn that, in other words, in order to prove something is a cyclic quad, that you have to prove either the exterior angle is the sum of the in, the exterior angle equals interior opposite angle, or that um, equal angles are subtended by the same chord or equal chords. If you know that, then you know what to look for. Similarly, if you need to prove something is a tangent, you need to know the tan chord theorem. Okay, do you understand that? So you have to know your theory in order to be able to do this. So what I always suggest to my students is that you go learn, 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 learn your theory, make sure you know it, and then go practice. And then if you struggle, go back, make sure you know the theorems again. You have to make sure you know the theorems anyway, because generally in the exams, they like to ask the theorems. And it's quite a big portion of the exam. Right. Okay. 
So this is looking at ratio and proportion and similarity. Okay, it says in triangle ABC, wait, I need another color. In triangle ABC, D is the midpoint of AB. So D is the midpoint. And CD, CD is parallel to FE. And AE to EC is two over three. So this is two, two, three. Okay, that's two to three, where the whole of this to the whole of that is one to one. Okay, because that's the midpoint. It says determine the value, determine the reasons the value of AF to FB. Okay, AF, AF to FB. Okay, AF. 2FB should also be 2 to 3. And the reason I say, is it? No, it's not. Okay, first of all, do you agree that this ratio would be 2 to 3? Sorry, within this big triangle. Wait, let me draw it for you so you can see what I'm talking about. In triangle ADC, We can see that FE is parallel to DC and that this ratio is 2 to 3, which means that this ratio must be 2 to 3 as well. Okay. But now we're looking for the ratio of, we're looking for the ratio of the whole of this AF to FB, the whole of that. Okay. The whole of that. But do you agree that they've told us that AD is the same as DB? So if AD is 5, this also has to be 5. Do you see it? So therefore, the ratio of AF to FB has to be equal to 2 to 8. Because that's 2 to 3 plus 5, which is 2 to 8. Hmm. That's quite a nice, nice question. I like that one. Now it says, find the area of triangle a, B, C, B, C, E, B, C, E, B, C, E. Okay, wait, hang on. Let me just erase some stuff here. So now we've got all the measurements. Okay. Now they want the area of triangle B, C, E. Okay. Over the area of triangle F, E, A, F, E, A. Okay, right, so now, okay, so there's no reasons required, no reasons required. Okay, so let me just have a look at these little triangles before I have a nervous breakdown because I not enjoy ratio and proportion that much. Okay, so let's have a look at it. We want to compare this little triangle here, which is triangle AFE, to this triangle here, BCE, okay, BCE. So the way the areas generally work, I'm just looking for another parallel set of parallel lines, but there's only one set of parallel lines. That gives us that triangle, which gives us, um, and this triangle. Oh, there we go. Okay, do you agree that the area, okay, usually we do with the area, we do half base some side. Do you agree? Um, okay. If I let this be x, okay, and this is a ratio of 2 to 3, then if this is 2x, then this is going to be um, 3x, because the ratio is always the same. So that's 2x, that is going to be 3x. Do you agree with that? In other words, the whole of that is going to be 3x, and that there is going to be 2x, because we're looking at that triangle there. Okay, do you agree? So now, if we had to look at the area of this triangle here, it would be a half times 2 times 2x. Do you agree? Um, 
if we had to look at the area of this triangle, it would be a half times five times three X. Um, sorry, I've gone blank. I can't say what I'm going to come back to this question. I have just literally gone totally blank on this question. I will come back to it. Let's move on to the next question. I promise I'll come back to it. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's probably going to do with the two to the eight thing. I'll come back to it. I promise I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it tomorrow. Okay. Let's carry on. It says 10.1. In the diagram below, triangle ABC and PQR are given that A is P and B is equal to Q and C is equal to R and line XY is drawn. Okay, so do you agree that these two triangles are similar? Okay, these two triangles are similar. It says not line XY is drawn so that AX is equal to PQ, so that is equal to this, and AY is equal to PR, so that is equal to this, okay? It says use the diagram to prove that XY is parallel to BC, okay? So since we know that this angle is equal to that angle and that this triangle now is congruent to this triangle because of side angle side. This means that this angle would have to equal to this one. But that angle, this angle is equal to this one. Therefore, these two lines are parallel. Okay. So again, we know that angle A is equal to angle P because they gave it to us. We know that AX is equal to PQ because they've drawn it and that AY is equal to PR because they've drawn it. Therefore, triangle XAY is congruent to triangle QPRY side angle side. Therefore, we can say that angle X is equal to angle Q but that is equal to angle B because it is given. Therefore, XY is parallel to BC because of corresponding angles. Okay, so that is equal to that. Now they say prove that AB, AB over PQ is the same as AC over PR. Okay, so this is just doing ratio and proportion because if you know that this triangle ABC is proportional to PQR, then you know that AB over PQ has to equal AC over PR. So that's a silly question. Let's move on to this question. Okay, so this looks like it is analytical geometry. It says a circle having C3 minus 1 as the center and a radius of 10 units is drawn. PTR is a tangent to the circle at K and R is at K21. C and P are vertices and TR is 20 units. Now it says give a reason why TC is perpendicular to TR? Well, because TR is a tangent and TC is a radius and they are always perpendicular to each other. Then it says calculate the length of RC, leave your answer in third form. Well, if that's perpendicular and this is 10 and we were given this is 20, we can work out RC. So we can say RC is equal to the square root of 20 squared plus 10 squared, which is the square root of 400 plus 100, which is the square root of 500. Okay, and I just want to see if there's a nicer way to write square root of 500. Square root of 5, insert form I mean, equals 10 root 5. Okay, so I'm going to write that as 10 root 5. Five. I think it's fine to leave your answers root 500, but um, so let's write it as root 500, which equals 10 root 5. Okay, done. Now it says calculate the value of K 
if r lies in the first quadrant, if r lies in the first quadrant. Okay, so now we've got the length of this. So do you agree we could use the length formula and we could use this thing and that point there to find k. So we could say that rc squared is equal to, no, let's put it a different way. RC is equal to the square root of X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. And it doesn't matter which way you write this. So do you agree that's the square root of, and this is square root 500, right? X2, it doesn't matter, let's call this uh, 2. So it's K minus 3 squared plus y2 is minus 1 minus 21 all squared. Okay, so then do you agree that we've got 500 is equal to k squared minus 6k plus 9 plus, this is minus 22 squared. Okay, so let's work that out. We got 22 squared. Mm -mm. 22, we get there, squared equals 484. So we've got 0 is equal to k squared minus 6k plus 9 plus 484 minus 500 which equals k squared minus 6k. And then we just need to do some math. So we're going to go minus 500 equals plus 9 equals 7. So this becomes minus 7. So if we can factorize that pretty easy, it's k and k and 7 and 1 and minus and plus. Therefore, k is equal to 7 or k is equal to negative 1. But you'll notice that they said that it is in the first quadrant, so therefore k has to be 7. So it's 7, 21 is r. Now it says... Determine the equation of the circle having center C and passing through t, um, t, write your answer in the following formula. So this is actually quite an easy question for the simple reason that we've been given the center of the circle and we know what the radius is. Okay, so therefore we can say that this is going to be x minus 3 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to, and remember it's r squared, not just r, so that's 100. Right, let's carry on. So that is the equation of the circle, okay, just in case we need it. Now it says ps is a tangent to the circle, okay, and it's parallel to the x-axis, okay. Determine the equation of PS. Okay, so if it's parallel to the X axis and it touches here, then do you agree the X value of that has to be three something? We don't know what it was. It just has to be three something. Okay. We therefore need to find the Y value of that. Do you agree? Because then we are going to get an equation of y is equal to something because it is parallel. But we know that this radius is 10. So it's going to be minus 1 going down is going to be minus 11. So therefore we know that this is minus 11. Okay, that point. Therefore, the equation of PS is Y is equal to negative 11. Because all the way along here, doesn't matter what your X value is, your Y value is going to be minus 11. 
Now it says the equation of PTR, PTR is 3y minus 4x is equal to 35. Okay, so that the PTR is 3y minus 4x equals 35. They want us to find the coordinates of P. So what we can do is we can equate these two equations. Okay, so we can go y equals minus 11 and we've got 3y minus 4x is equal to 35. So therefore we can substitute y being minus 11 into here. So we've got 3 times minus 11 minus 4x is equal to 35. 3 times 11 is 33. When we take it across, it becomes an add. So it's minus 4x is equal to 35 plus 33. So minus 4x is equal to 68. Therefore, x is going to be equal to minus 68 over 4, which equals negative. 4 goes into 6 once remainder 2. 4 goes into 28 7 times. Yes. So therefore, this is going to be minus 17. A second. Minus 17 minus 11. Okay, so now we've done that. Now it says calculate the length of PT. Calculate the length of PT. Show the necessary working. Okay, so do you agree we need to find T? in order to find the length of PT. And that's quite a long sum. So we're going to carry on with this. Actually, no, let's start it. Let's start it. Let's start it. Let's start it. Okay, let me just erase some stuff here so I've got space to write. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is find point T, okay? And the only way we can do that is to simultaneously equate this equation of the circle with this equation of the straight line. That's the only way we're going to find T. Okay, so let us do that. So we have to rearrange this equation. So it becomes 3y minus 4x is equal to 35. So therefore, do you agree that y is equal, let's put 3y, is equal to 4x minus plus 35. Therefore, y is going to be 4 over 3x plus 35. I'm pretty sure I don't have to only do that. There must be a quicker way. Oh, there is. There is a much quicker way. The quicker way is this. If we find the length of CP, then we can use Pythagoras to find the length of PT. So let's find the length of CP. So CP is equal to the square root of 3 minus minus 17 squared plus minus 1 plus 11 minus times a minus squared which is going to be the square root of 3 minus minus 17 is 3 minus minus 17 is 20 so it's 20 squared plus 10 squared which is the square root of 500 so you will notice that that there is also square root 500 which means that this and this they are equilateral triangles well i mean they, they are i saw these triangles and that means that we've, because we've dropped a line down, this is also going to be equal. So therefore, PT is 20. PT is 20. Now it says, let's just erase. Consider circle, another circle, 
with center 3 x, equal, x minus 3 y plus 16 squared is equal to 16. Okay, having center m. Write down the coordinates of center m. Okay, well that's pretty easy. It's going to be 3, negative 16. Okay. Then it says write down the length of the radius. Well, that's going to be 4. Because of the fact that remember that this is the square, so we need to find the square root. Now it says prove that the circle with center C and the circle with center M do not touch or intersect. Okay, so we've got some random point, which is at 3, 3, negative 16. Okay, so X is 3, Y is negative 16, and its radius is only 4. Do you see that C and M um, are how far apart? Okay, let's see. C is at 3, negative 1, and M is at 3, negative 16. So do you agree that they are 15 units apart? Okay, in the Y direction, right? C circle has a radius of 10, and M circle has a radius of 4. So if you add them, that gives you 14. That means the gap between these two circles is going to be one unit. Right, grade 12s, um, that's it for today. I will come back to that question that I went blank on and I will show you how to do it tomorrow. Have a great day.